In the last video, I shared with you some spiritual insight about vortex math and how vortex math and geometry are actually linked together. The numbers 3, 6, and 9 are mathematical patterns in life that has spiritual significance to the Godhead Christians follow. The Godhead known as the Holy Trinity can be mathematically and scientifically quantified through the electrical patterning of frequency and vibration that exists within all atoms. Atomical structures are what make up matter in its various states, solid, liquid, gases, and plasma. Matter can also be quantified by its energetic geometrical patterns as the circle is the most important shape to creation. Squeeze or twist a circle at the diameter and you get another shape that is the number eight. The number eight forms the hourglass figure or the geometrical shape called the hyperboloid. The hyperboloid is a shape that is natural in form within nature. We see this in wind and water patterns, tornadoes, whirlwinds, and whirlpools, each forming a vortex in the center. This vortex draws debris into itself through a force called inertia. An example of inertia is seen when you pull the plug from a drain. The water and debris is drawn into the center of the drain through swirling action that sucks anything caught in the current into its middle. Welcome to the mysteries of life. Numbers are used by God to create and creation reveals itself to us in the beauty of geometric shapes. It's really fascinating how the seen and unseen are dependent on each other to exist. This is the beauty of opposites. We can't have one without the other. Everywhere you look, you are shown size and shapes of things. But you hardly give thought to the possibility that these shapes and sizes are completely regulated by numbers. Let's look at the architecture of a building, for example. When you look at the size and shape of a building, you only see the end product. You do not see the beauty of what numbers and mathematical equations were used to create what you see. The numbers and mathematical equations are the foundation of that building, but they are missing from your point of view, from your scope of view. They exist as a spiritual dynamic holding up that building. In fact, the building could not exist without the use of numbers and perfect ratio and geometric patterning. When we look at God's creation through the beauty of the flowers, the forest, and the mountains, all of nature exists within a hidden numerical and geometric design. All of God's creation does, including you, both physically and spiritually, the numerical system of the numbers 1 through 9 and various geometrical shapes were used to form your body. The numbers 3, 6, and 9 were the foundation of your spirit being, and it's up to you and me to align ourselves back spiritually to those numbers so that the architecture, our building, our temples, which are our bodies, will remain in perfect alignment and remain erect according to the foundation of the numbers it was built from. Today, I'd like the opportunity to share with you about the spiritual dynamic that has everything to do with you in Vortex Math. God is unseen. He is spirit and you were made in his spiritual image. If we are being called to take back our birthright from the enemy and tap into the unseen, to do so, it's important to understand our image of God we were created in, and that is spiritual. It is unseen and it exists as a vibratory frequency. God is love. Love is his image and it is his character's image. Love, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8, is who God is and in his image he cannot change. This is who we are to aspire to emulate. The form of love that is who God is, he is unchanging, and his love is, was, and always will be unchanging. That's because his love is unconditional. Love is patient. Love is kind. 
It is not rude. It does not boast. It is not self-seeking. It does not keep record of wrongs. It does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. This love goes against the love that is in the world. Worldly love is conditional. It is what we have been born into, raised with, and it is something that we hang around. Living for, with, and becoming conditional love has effectively lowered our frequency and vibration as spiritual beings. This is why we are seeing so much decay and degeneration spiritually and physically in this world. Our spirit natures are not congruent with the foundation of numbers God used to create humanity with. We have come so far away from the unseen building blocks of nature through the spiritual creative powers of 3, 6, and 9. We instead are living more in alignment with the creative forces of 1 and 8. And we are gravitating to the God of this world who operates in extreme negativity. Feelings and emotions are what make up your character. These feelings and emotions have everything to do with the creative forces behind the unseen dynamics of math and numbers. This is because science has effectively shown that feelings and emotions can be quantified and measured on a frequency scale. Researchers at MIT created machines that can tell you how you feel through a device called the EQ radio, which emits and captures reflected radio frequencies or RF waves. These tech-savvy researchers were able to measure breathing patterns and heart rates of various people. Collecting the data and entering it into a computer program designed for this purpose, the program matched physical factors with emotional signals, which then placed the individual tested into one of four categories or states of emotion. Emotion, pleasure, sadness, or joy. Surprisingly enough to researchers, this model had an 87% accuracy rating. So what's the difference? What's the difference between feelings and emotions anyways, and why should this matter? According to modern psychology, emotions and feelings are not the same. Although we may use the terms interchangeably, as they do have similar elements, there is a difference between the two. Now, emotions are feelings, and feelings are emotions, but again, with a slight twist, feelings are both emotional and physical experiences combined. They are conscious experiences. They are emotions that you are presently aware of. They are the physical expression of one's emotional state. They have no memory attached as they are in the current and present moment. An example of this may be that somebody right now presents you with a puppy and your feelings of joy and happiness well up inside of you and you are consciously aware of this. You are present in the moment as this gift causes you to feel love and appreciation in the now. Now, emotions are feelings that do not attach themselves to any particular action in the now. Emotions are a part of our conscious thought that we understand what we are feeling, but they have no attachment to the realization of being present and current in the moment. So that gives them the unconscious feeling of how scientists know that they manifest from the unconscious mind. And that's because emotions are a feedback system whose influence is on behavior that is indirect. Now, as confusing as this sounds, emotions are a part of you as they form your character. Emotions are formed from feelings that were long formed long ago. But the past can be consciously reflected on from time to time, or these emotions can be stored in the unconscious mind, where the emotion still exists, but the memory attached to that feeling is not so easily recalled, and it seems to be forgotten. Well, if this sounds confusing, I'd like to share a personal, historical, emotional imbalance that I had that may help you understand the difference between emotions and feelings. Going back to a long time in history, a time when I was five years old, 
I have a memory of me being that age, playing on the school monkey bars. And what came about from that day formed an emotional boundary or hindrance for me in my adult years. And this is because what happened in that moment of my youth, those feelings of that current time of that here and now formed a traumatic ending that took root in and formed an emotion that my current state now as an adult could not attribute to anything of the past. As an adult, I had no idea why I had a fear of heights. I had a short fleeting memory of me laying on the ground when I was a child with my arm crushed underneath me and in pain. I knew why I was there, but I had no memory of the fall. I had no memory of the physical event. I just remembered the emotional outcome of the present moment as a child. I was in pain. Every time I got on a ladder as an adult, the feelings that came from me falling and breaking my arm formed the emotional state to keep me safe from climbing to great heights as an adult. So feelings are not necessarily stored. Emotions are stored feelings that sometimes you can recollect, but sometimes more often than not, you cannot recollect. So the moment of my youth formed a traumatic ending and took root in my emotions that my memory could not recall. I had no idea why climbing a ladder was so traumatic for me. Even going like two steps on the, the ladder and I was like two feet high, I was like shaking. I couldn't figure out why. Every time I got in, every time I got on a ladder as an adult, I would become fearful. This was a current feeling that I consciously was aware of. But the emotional attachment to the pain of the past is what was welling up the current fear in me. I was not consciously aware of the emotional attachment. I could not figure that out. I had no memory, and me being an adult, I had no idea. And me being an adult, I had no idea that the fall and breaking my arm at the age of five was the very thing that was holding me back as an adult to climb the ladder and go and challenge my fear of heights. I asked God this in prayer one day, why I had a fear of height, and he showed me through a memory I had forgotten. He brought the subconscious into the conscious, and I saw myself in soft little shoes, standing on the geometric metal shape that had rungs like a ladder to climb on. Well, I, in my memory, was at the very top standing as tall as I could be with my hands on my hips, shouting, I'm the king of the castle. I was so proud of myself. I did it. I stood on the very top rung at the top of the rounded hexagonical shape of the monkey bars that no other person dared to go. I was the lone soldier. I was brave. I scaled that 10 foot tall mountain and I was on top of the world. Oh, but instead of crouching down to scale down gently and cautiously to go back to the ground, no, I had to walk across the rungs at the top. I had to show off. And that is what led me to my fall. My foot slipped off the rung in front of me and I lost my balance and fell. I remember the pain and laying there on the ground moaning. A teacher neared me and then I was in the x-ray table in complete agony and pain. My memories are fragmented and they eluded me, but the emotion attached to those memories still lingered and followed me into the future as an adult. So to stop triggering the effect of feeling unsafe when I was on a ladder, I had to face my fear. I had to challenge myself and make a conscious effort by getting on that ladder and trusting myself and trusting my footing. I, as an adult, was not going to do anything that put me in harm's way. I truly had learned a lesson 
So as you can see, feelings are the conscious emotions we currently feel that we are aware of. Emotions are feelings that are historical. They are stored feelings of our past that hold memory or no memory at all. Emotions are feelings that we had in our youth, and emotions of our youth are feelings that we expressed in the moment and the time that we were presently conscious of in our youth. And these emotions, stored emotions, are what form our character or who we are now because those emotions form feelings in us that help to keep us safe, to help us to stay away from danger and not go beyond our comfortable zone. Feelings are the way we spiritually feelings are the way we spiritually react to a specific stimuli. And as children, our brains were developing and used our feelings to create a foundation that would form habitual behaviors and patterns of thinking in the future, or our adulthood that would form our character. I can say now, once I confronted my emotions by challenging my feelings, I am now more courageous and I trust myself and this changed my belief about myself. One of I can't do this to one of I can do this. So looking at the diagram, looking at this diagram we can see that according to science, understanding the frequency of our emotions, who we are as inner beings, we can change who we once were just by expressing positive feelings here and now and doing positive things that help us to reinforce the positive feelings that we feel and reinforce those emotions of positivity of our past or, the, or get rid of the emotions of negativity of our past. It's all about choices. By expressing feelings here and now, we are changing our future. We are changing and transforming ourselves by renewing our minds to be better focused on positivity and less negative. And doesn't God's word say that we need to be conformed by the renewing of our minds? Our feelings give our emotions energy. And like vortex math, our frequency and vibration of our emotions sucks us into negative unending patterns of rinse and repeat if we allow our emotions to rule us. When we step out and act like a tornado, our emotions can wreak havoc if we are not aware of where they come from. Living a life following in the ways of Jesus and living that repentant lifestyle changes our hearts so that we can live in positive frequency that is more and more in tune to his frequency based on the spiritual patterns of the numbers three, six, and nine. The tornado forms a hyperboloid, and it just so happens that our emotions are also mapped in an upwards or downward spiral. Moving upwards, we have a positive emotions or feelings, and moving downwards, we have negative emotions and feelings. Frequency is the speed at which something moves. It is defined as being the rate at which something it is defined as being the rate at which something occurs or is repeated over a particular period of time. It is also the rate of speed at which vibrations occur. Vibration is the oscillation of the moving back and forth or up and down movement in atomic structures. Think of a bouncing ball. The ball represents the atom and the bounce rate represents the frequency and the vibration represents the up and down motion of the bounce rate. The two are dependent on one another. The ball is moved by a force, by you throwing it, and that force would be equal to the energetic structures within the ball. I know that's a pale comparison, but that's all we have to go on right now. And the atom consists of energy. And the atom contains electrons that are always in motion, always. So understanding your feelings and emotions is beneficial into understanding how telekinesis effectively works. Using the Holy Spirit to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons when you are negatively charged with negative emotions and feelings is, an ineffective, is ineffective and mocks the kingdom of God. 
Positivity is where light exists and negativity is where darkness resides. Each emotion can be attributed to the color spectrum. That's why I have Roy G. Biv here. The colors of the rainbow. And that is because color two is frequency. The more intense the color, the more vibration the frequency of the color or emotion. The more intense the color, the more vibration the frequency of the color or emotion or feeling it has. And we'll go into this in another video where there are energy centers that are associated with certain kind of colors. It just so happens that our feelings and emotions are actually attached to color. Some people have the ability to see this color emanating from people. Jesus allowed his color to shine in front of his disciples, to which they became fearful. Ezekiel saw spiritual creatures that emanated color. Moses saw the Lord who emanated color. And Moses reflected God's light. As he came off the mountain, he had to cover his face with a veil because people were fearful of seeing the face of Moses shine. Is there really something to all of this? Can people really see the auric field of the body? As science knows, we emanate electricity. What science calls electricity, God calls spirit. This light exists outside the visible spectrum of light. And many people have made claims to see people's auras. This caught the attention of scientists in Japan at the University of Tokyo. Using sensitive cameras, a person's special glow was captured at specific times of the day. The glow appears brightest in the morning and seems to fade by mid-evening. This special glow is most visible around the face, the mouth, the cheeks, and the neck. And science also knows that the eyes actually emit light. Another technique called the Kirlian photography also detects the energy emanating from people and other objects such as plants. This was first used by accident in 1933 by Semyon Kirlian and his wife Valencia. They witnessed someone in the hospital receiving high frequency electrical treatment which prompted them to do their own private experiments, which led to discovery that all things carry a vibrational frequency that can literally be seen. So what does this have to do with the Bible and telekinesis? Well, looking at the teachings of Jesus, he preached positivity. A negative person cannot operate positively in the spirit. God has nothing to do with darkness. If a negative person appears to work in the name of Jesus, then one will have to question if this is not serving vanity as the negative works are in the deceptive. Positive works in truth exclusively as truth is absolute. Science knows that our brain is like an antenna to the information that exists all around us. Our minds process information at lightning speed. And the thoughts that come into our minds from outside of ourselves, that's a little bit hard to fathom. And it seems like it's new agey, but it's not. It's the new science of modern day because science has altered its perception through experiments that have been proven in this modern age that are putting down the old school science of 20, 30 and beyond years ago. The science knows that our brains process 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts per day. That's an average of 25,000 to 3,000 thoughts per hour. Now think about that over the course of your lifetime so far. How can our brains store that much information? They can't and they don't. Science now knows, I'm gonna move that over there just a little bit. My glasses keep hitting it. Science knows something many of us now do not. Our thoughts are projected outside of ourselves. 
what we think about, we bring about. Now, if we are not thinking about something and bringing it about for ourselves, we are at least putting it out there for somebody else with the same resonancy or the frequency and vibration that we have at the time of that thought. Somebody else grabs onto that and that may become a stumbling block for them. So that's why we're supposed to keep our minds focused on Christ because when you're focused on Christ, God will not steer you wrongly. Our thoughts. Science can give us a better understanding of what is going on and, and also helps us to understand that Jesus also says that what we think about, we bring about. Because what we think about spiritually, it is as if it's already happened. Ah, oh, we need to focus our minds on Christ and circumcise our hearts so that what we do in speech and in action is always congruent and lines up with the Word of God. May I ask you to go read some scripture? Read Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 5 through 9. Read Matthew chapter 15 verses 18 through 19. Read Matthew chapter 18 verse 5. Now I'd like to explain Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 5 through 9 as this is a spiritual accentuation, as we are to tie the word of God as symbols around our wrists. This represents acting out the word of God in our lives. What we think about, we bring about. And what we think about in our hearts, it grabs hold of and it becomes thought or, and it comes out in speech or action. And this is backed up by Matthew chapter 15 verses 18 through 19. Now binding the word of God around our foreheads is a number, is another symbolic gesture and it means to have the mind of Christ. To focus our minds on the Word of God and to become humble and obedient to the Word, just like a child, as spoken of in Matthew chapter 18, verse 5. Positive thinking is rooted in the ministry of Jesus. In fact, it is rooted in the New Testament. Science shares with us the deeper mysteries and the underpinnings of God's Word that we can't quite yet understand. Because many of us are still suckling on the milk of the Word and not eating of the meat of the Word. The keys to God's kingdom are given, but not to be used before we are ready. If we don't know how to use them, we will crash and burn. Have you ever given the keys to your car to a toddler? No, that would be irresponsible. God is not irresponsible with his word or his kingdom power. If we want to be trusted with God's word, we have to put it into practice to show that we can be trusted with the authority of using kingdom power to glorify God's holy name. Now, telekinesis, healing, casting out demons, and raising the dead are all rooted in scientific evidence that is beginning to expose us to unlimited potential in God's mighty power. Love that is unconditional has the powerful force through frequency and vibration to move mountains. Love that is conditional, love that is conditional, superficial and fleeting, has the power to harm and destroy as death takes root in the heart of the individual through destructive emotions. Positive emotions and feelings have the healing effect that is long lasting. Through understanding how to align one's heart and mind, one can have an effective life that builds faith, that builds confidence to serve, protect, and defend for Jesus. Understanding your emotions and feelings will help you develop your telekinesis skills as you strive to live that repentant lifestyle also. Your frequency and vibration go hand in hand with living a new life through Jesus. Adopting his ways is what it means to come up out of this world through thought and in action. When we live for this world in thought and in action, we are taking on the spiritual mark of the beast. The mind and the hand, 666, 8 and 1, which equates to 9. Emotions have a frequency scale and the lowest range is from 20 to 75 Hertz. These emotions are shame and guilt, apathy and grief. 
These emotions are what cause one to become inactive and they cause stagnancy. A person feels paralyzed in their emotions and they cannot loosen themselves of these emotions and the spiritual chains of these emotions. These emotions offer, offer, these emotions offer negative self-reflection, self-pity, unworthiness, and they keep one stuck in a rut. So these are the people that cannot change. The next level of emotions are the ones that drive you into action. They range from 100 to 175 hertz. They are not healthy emotions as these negative emotions are rooted in ego. These emotions get us to act out in fear, unbridled desire, lust, and anger. These emotions also cause stagnancy, but they can also motivate someone to do better. If one is willing to turn inside themselves and self-reflect. But a word of caution, pride goes before a fall and at the 200 Hertz range a lot of inner self-reflection is needed to get past this frequency. Now beyond the pride at the 200 Hertz range there exists humbleness. Humbleness and hopefulness with contentment are what God defines as submission. These ranges of emotion are seen at the 210 to 350 hertz, and they are neutralizing or neutral and calming. So here, either someone can be bored in the 210 range or they can turn their boredom into contentment. This is where God says, you are neither hot nor cold and because you are neither, I will spew you out of your mouth. If you're not on fire for God and instead living in these emotions, you need to understand how to change those negative emotions to positive emotions because we need to have a commitment and a connection with God through being content. And that contentment produces hopefulness. And hopefulness produces optimism and positivity and enthusiasm and passion. And then we get to our joy where God says, let your joy be full. And don't let anyone take away your joy and your empowerment and your appreciation for God himself. So this needs to this needs to become a way of life because it's easy to transition. One minute you feel joy, but then a negative person comes along and they deflate you. So you need to be comfortable and confident in who you are and keep that state of wellness and being unchangeable. Don't let negativity change who you want to become or who you are in positivity. And that's why it's important to stay in the word. I hold, what is the, the scripture? I hide the word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. When you hide the word of God in your heart, it becomes your state of being. And that is love, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8, is our state of being, not just state of feeling. When you become the state of being, the negative people and negativity in this world can't affect you and harm you. The reason why they affect you so much is because you're still allowing the love inside of you to just remain a state of feeling and it's not becoming your state of being. So when you practice and stay in God's Word and you allow God's Word to change who you are in character, it positively affects those negative emotions, kicks them out to reinforce positive feelings and emotions that stay with you in the present here and now and that forms your future person who is developing just like a child in its mother's womb you are developing over time to serve Jesus and become the born again Christian and have the born again experience so at 400 to 600 Hertz the emotions and feelings of peace in pure intent is found. Here one will feel love and joy, reason and empowerment. Beyond this state of 700 hertz is pure bliss. Raising your emotional frequency 
can be challenging and hard. It takes more self-reflection than one might care to participate in. But deep soul searching comes with self-reflecting on God's word and meditating on his word day and night. Be consistent in your efforts and you will see positive change. 432 hertz is said to be the healing range for the body through soothing music tuned to this frequency. This frequency taps into the emotional range of love and peace and joy, contentment, and helps to resonate the soul at a level that maintains consistency. Something that is repeated for 20 to 40 days consistently each day becomes a habit. And when you make living an emotional positive frequency a part of your daily balance, you will become more loving towards yourself and others and God, our Father in Heaven. So here's an interesting clue. 432 can be broken down into one single digit. Nine. Music can be used to help us to align with worldly love or godly love. The choice is yours. Math is a language of love as the spiritual numbers 3, 6, and 9 form a powerful dynamic when we are emotionally in alignment to God's image. His image is love according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 through 8. Vortex numbers are reciprocating numbers that have more to do with creation than what we can imagine. From this simple circle to the number 8 to the hyperboloid to the total void, math and geometry are an integral part to all facets of life. The vortex is a shape that shares with you spiritual applications as emotions are linked to frequency and vibration, just as the numbers are. Our emotions act like a vortex, drawing like-minded people to us or repelling those whom we cannot resonate with. The spiritual applications of 3, 6, and 9 are endless. Buckle up because it's about to get turbulent as we look inside the vortex to view the beauty and magnetism that has everything to do with the matters of the heart and mind, feelings and emotions. But that's another video for another day. Until next time, thanks for watching and be blessed.